Good morning and welcome to this edition of Hyclopedia. Today we're in Singapore's Changi Beach Park and we have a special guest today, my wife Casey. Say hi. Hi. And uh, shortly we're going to be heading off to the only undeveloped part of Singapore. It's uh, Palau Ubin. The reason Palau Ubin is undeveloped, still undeveloped, is because it's an island. Um, Palau I means it's the Malay word for island. So I always like to stock up on um, food before I head over to the island because there's nothing there. Um, so I'm going to get some Singapore classic food, uh, the curry puff. Yes. Hello, do you have sardine? Oh, what have you got left? Just, uh, oh, okay. Uh, I get uh, three potato, please. Yeah, the curry puff is kind of like a very early fusion food. It's you've got the pastry that was brought in by the um, British colonials, and then the curry, which is the local food. Thank you. Heading over to the uh, ferry terminal now, and to catch a bum boat. It's called so because basically. You put your bum on the boat and you go. And the way they work is kind of old-fashioned because they have a capacity of 12 passengers and uh, you basically have to wait at the terminal until there's 12 people before the boat will leave. So sometimes you can be there for five minutes and sometimes you can be there for a long time. Uh, hopefully we've timed it just right. It's about 9 a.m and uh, usually you can get a boat pretty quickly at this time of the day. So we got 12 people, we're heading over to the boat. That took, that was probably the quickest one ever. Okay, so now we are on Palau Ubin. Okay, so most people who come to Palau Ubin, they you they rent bikes. But uh, I like to walk, which is why we're here. Here come the bike hire salesman. All right, so Palau Ubin is pretty undeveloped. So if we're lucky, you can see quite a bit of wildlife. Previously on the way over I've seen otters and you might see some in the water around but uh, I have some old footage of otters so we'll roll on that. And 
something else you might see. There's a good chance you'll see our sea eagles or ospreys. Um, but it's more difficult to get footage of them, but I'll try my best. Um, we might also see hornbills, which are really beautiful big birds. I've got some I've got some archive footage of those as well in case we don't see any. There's also a good chance we might see some wild boars on Ubin because they're pretty much everywhere. If you camp here, which you can, you'll definitely see wild boars because they come sniffing around the campsite at night looking for food. An assortment of lizards and definitely water monitors. In fact, Ubin, here in Ubin was the place where I took my best ever photos of a lizard, which I'll show you now. Um, at first I thought they were fighting, but then I quickly realized that uh, that's not what they were doing. You definitely see some macaques, because they're everywhere. I just saw a hornbill. I'm hoping we can get a shot of him before he flies away. Beautiful bird. Now one of the reasons I like to come to Palau Bin is it's very quiet um, because there's basically only about 10 cars on the whole island. Uh, the downside of walking here is most of the track is tarmac but um, there are a few areas where you can go off-road and also it's quite shady, so even though it's really hot, you don't get sunburned. Right, so I'm here at uh, Katam Quarry and there's um, a mountain bike path that goes around the uh, quarry. And I actually like to hike around this section because it's the only bit of actual real hiking that you can do on the island. Unlike on mainland Singapore there's no signs or threats of fines for walking around the mountain bike path. Because it's midweek, it's actually Friday today, there's very little chance that you'll actually meet any cyclists on the path. So uh, let's go for it. Now this is what I'm talking about, this is real hiking. Just love the roots of these um, tropical hardwood trees. It's like a, a maze of crazy wood. Check that out. It's so beautiful. Reminds me a bit of um, Angkor Wat. Now, it may be one big island today, but Palau Bin didn't used to be like that. Originally, it was five smaller landmasses that were joined together by the prawn farmers that used to live here. Now, according to local history, the farmers used their hands to join the island together, dumping buckets and buckets of mud in the gaps between the island to create one single landmass. The mud was used to create dikes and pens in which they raised the prawns. And if you look closely at this map of the island, you can see the five distinctive landmasses in light green. Pretty amazing, huh? Now, Ubin also used to be several decades the source of most of the granite that was used in construction work on the main island. So the legacy of that are the water-filled quarries that dot the island. So we're heading up to Puaka Hill, which is the highest point on the island. It's not very high though, but uh, there's a nice view. So this is the highest part of Palau Bin. You've got a nice view. 
you can see Singapore over there and then if we pan this way you can see the quarry down below and then this land over here is Malaysia Even on a place so undeveloped as Palau Bin, we still get a lot of litter. So I always like to pick it up if I see any and then dump it when I find a bin. Okay, so now we are going down one of my little shortcuts, which takes us to the second campsite. Okay, so here we are at Mamam campsite on the other side of the island. It's quite a nice campsite, although I've never actually seen anyone camping here. It would be even nicer if they didn't have this ugly metal fence. I'm guessing it's to deter smugglers because uh, that is Malaysia just over there. It's about two kilometers away and um, there's a lot of smuggling and illegal activity that goes on P uh, usually cigarettes alcohol probably i'm not sure but definitely cigarettes and sometimes people so i guess this fence has been built as a deterrent although if you look more closely there's a couple of huge openings in it so i'm not sure how much of a deterrent it is but point eight kilometers for today and we are here at Czech Jawa wetlands. The visitor center of Czech Jawa is quite interesting as it is the former home of the colonial era surveyor and uh, now it's been converted into the park's visitor center. There are two sections of uh, Czech Jawa. There's the mangrove boardwalk 
and the coastal border. If you go to the visitor center, there's so many spectacular photos of the sea creatures and things you can see on the coastal walk that everybody gets immediately drawn to that. But uh, I mean, I've been there about, I don't know, a dozen times and I've not actually seen anything on the coastal border. Look at this. That is the seed pod of the Atap or Nipa Palm. The one disappointing thing about the uh, mangrove boardwalk is the amount of rubbish trapped in the mangroves. There's like plastic bottles and bags and all kinds of detritus. That's just a symbol of what's going on in the world these days, I guess. There's large um, tracts of uh, seagrass on this coastal walk and apparently Dugongs come along here and chew on it occasionally. Ah, so pissed. I just missed a really good uh, shot of a seagull. He just landed in the tree just over there, but as soon as I got my uh, camera pointed at him, he flew off and I uh, couldn't get him in time. So we're coming to the end of today's walk. I've done about 19 kilometers. So it's been quite a good, uh, a good day on the wildlife front. Please give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more of the same. And finally, don't forget to get the bell on. <laughs>